Hello and welcome back to Mike's Maths. Thank you very much for joining us today. I hope you enjoy our lesson. Um, as you can see from the title page in front of you, uh, today's lesson is an algebra lesson and uh, we're looking at simultaneous equations, part one. Uh, in this lesson, you're going to learn how to solve simultaneous equations. And um, we're gonna be looking at the, uh, the easier type today which is uh, simultaneous equations that contain um, positive numbers. Uh, this is really a GCSE le uh, lesson or an IGCSE lesson. And uh, if you are following the new nine to one syllabus at GCSE or IGCSE, the work that we're gonna do in this lesson is uh, up to a, a level five. Um, if you're at the top end of key stage three, um, you still uh, this this lesson will still be useful to you because this is level seven or level eight work. Okay, um, now I've just said this is simultaneous equations part one. Um, there is a part two which goes on to talk about solving simultaneous equations where we have negative numbers, and also looking at solving simultaneous equations by using a graph. Okay, that's the content of part two, and then finally in simultaneous equations part three, we go on to talk about solving uh, simultaneous equations that contain quadratics. Now that is the harder stuff that goes up to um, sort of level seven, level eight work. Okay, so we're going to start off with uh, uh, simultaneous equations part one. As we said, this is level five, and um, just as an introduction. Um, when I've seen this, this topic taught in schools before, um, teachers tend to just stick to teaching a method, um, which is fine because the methods you know, will work and everything else. But uh, to me, it helps if we actually understand what's behind all of this. So um, I like to teach this in a way that, uh, that, that kind of explains what's going on. If you can understand why simultaneous equations work, then I think you've got a far better chance of retaining it um, and uh, and being good at it and being confident with it too. So that's what I'm going to try and concentrate on. And we're going to begin by telling uh, a, a story. Okay, so just um, imagine, for example, that you walk into a coffee shop, okay, and you buy two cups of coffee and one cup of tea, okay. Now you can't see a price list, okay, but you are charged four pounds all right now as i say you, you can't see a price list so you don't know how much one coffee is and you don't know how much one tea is but you do know that your bill came to four pounds okay somebody else comes in and orders three coffees and one tea okay and you notice that they are charged five pound fifty now you still can't see a price list okay but have we got enough information here to already work out, for example, the price of one cup of coffee? Have you spotted that? Well, let's have a think. Remember, you ordered two coffees and one tea. This person ordered three coffees and one tea. So this other person ordered one extra coffee. Can you see that? There's a difference here, isn't there? This is actually a difference question. Um, this person ordered one coffee more than you did. Okay, um, so there's a difference here of one cup of coffee. Well, we can work out the difference in the price because £5.50 take away £4 leaves you with £1.50. So we can see that one cup of coffee must be £1.50. All right. Now, if you can follow that, then that means that you really understand simultaneous equations already. All right. Uh, and that can take the fear away. Um, so what we're going to look at now is just, uh, just just a little bit more depth here as to why this works and why it was so easy for us to find out the price of one cup of coffee. Let's just go back just to make sure that you understood it. You ordered two coffees and one tea. The next person ordered three coffees and one tea. So this person ordered one coffee more than you did. And he was charged £1.50 more than you were. Therefore, a coffee is £1.50. Um, now... Mathematically, what we do, and it's important now that we learn a method because what I'm going to try and teach you now is a method for solving uh, all simultaneous equations. Um, and uh, it, uh, we, we can use it on this example that we've already hopefully understood. Okay, 
First of all, we label our two equations, equation 1 and equation 2. All right. Now, we talked about a difference. Really, what we're doing here is equation number 2 take away equation number 1. Um, because if we do three coffees, take away two coffees, we get one coffee. If we do one tea, take away one tea, we get nothing, plus nothing. And if we do £5.50, take away £4, we get £1.50. OK. Now we can rub out the plus zero because you wouldn't need to write that. OK, so that's mathematically how we've worked out uh, the price of one coffee is £1.50. Now, we'd still need to work out the price of one cup of tea. OK, so what we, what we would do is go back to one of your original equations. And I'm going to go back to this one because the numbers are a little bit smaller here. This is equation number one. So we say, OK, in equation number one, well, the first thing we have in equation number one is two coffees. We now know that one coffee is £1.50. So two coffees is two lots of that, so that's three pounds. OK, then we've got a plus sign, so we write a plus sign. Then we've got one t, so we write down one t. Then we've got equals, I've done that already. And then you've got four pounds, so we can write down four pounds. So three pounds plus a t equals four pounds. You can tell straight away that one t must be a pound. All right, so we can solve the equation. We've worked out here the price of a cup of coffee, which was one pound fifty. We've now worked out the price of a cup of tea at a pound. Okay. Now, that was all fairly straightforward, and it works um, because, if I just rub this lot out and go, again go back to the original uh, two equations that we set up, the reason it works when we do one equation take away the other is you're doing one t take away one t. We've got the same number of t's, so when we do one take away the other, we eliminate the t's. And that is something that we really need to remember because that's... Uh, at the heart of how we solve all simultaneous equations. Um, let's just emphasize this with another example. Okay, now this is this will probably look more familiar to you because in exams we tend to get X's and Y's instead of T's and coffees. Okay, um, here are two equations that we're given. We're told that they are simultaneous equations um, and we're asked to solve them. OK, that means there's going to be one value of x and one value of y. OK, we need to find what it is that make both of these equations work. Well, OK, let's start by labelling. We'll call this equation number one. We'll call this equation number two. All right. Now, although this says 4x plus 4y equals 28, we, you could think of it as 4, co uh, four t's or plus 4 coffees equals 28 pounds. OK, it's the same sort of thing. It's just in this case, instead of c's, and t's, we've got x's and y's. Okay, well when we look at our two equations, we should spot very quickly that we've got 4x here and 4x here. And that's good news. We want the same number of x's, uh, or the same number of y's, so that we can get rid of them. Well, okay, here we've got the same number of x's, so we can do 4x take away 4x. Okay, well that means we're going to do one of these equations, take away the other equation, um, which one do we want to do? Would, would we rather do 11y take away 4y, or would we rather do 4y take away 11y? Well, I hope you'd, you'd agree with me that 11y take away 4y is more sensible. So, in other words, we're going to do equation 2 take away equation 1. Okay, equation 2, this one, take away equation 1, this one. All right, well, let's begin. 4x take away 4x is nothing. That's what we wanted. Next, you've got 11y take away 4y. Okay, well, 11 take away 4 is 7. Okay, so you've got 7y. And then the numbers, 56 take away 28, leaves us with 28. Okay, we can rub out the 0 because we don't need it. So we've ended up with an equation just in y. 7y equals 28. We need to work out what 1y is. How do, we get some, how do we get from 7y to 1y? That's right, you divide by 7. So we divide the other side by 7. And you get the answer y equals 4. OK, so that was uh, nice and easy. Remember why it was easy. It was easy because we were able to do 4x take away 4x and get rid of the x's. 
OK. Well, we've just worked out y. We still need to work out x. So what you do is you go back to one of your original two equations and use that to work out the value of x. Now, I'm going to use this equation here, equation 1, simply because we've got some smaller numbers in this equation. So it'll probably be easier to use. OK. So we say in equation number 1, well, what have we got in equation number 1? First of all, we've got 4x. OK, so let's write down 4x. Then you've got a plus sign, so write a plus sign. Then we've got 4y. 4y means 4 times y, but we now know that y is 4. So 4y is 4 times 4, which is 16. And then finally, you've got equals 28, so equals 28. OK, put those out. So 4x plus 16 equals 28. That's an equation that we can solve. OK, we want to get 4x on its own. So take away 16 from this side of the equation, remembering that if we change one side, we have to do the same change to the other. So we take away 16 from both sides, write down what's left. OK, the 4x is left. Uh, on this side, you've got 28 take away 16, which is 12. Um, OK, how do we get from 4x to 1x? Divide by 4. Therefore, divide the 12 by 4, and we get x equals 3. So we have our solution. OK, uh, this was the original question. Solve these two equations. Our, our answer is y equals 4 and x equals 3. OK, so I hope you're starting to get the idea of these. What I'd like to do now is leave one for you to have a go at yourselves, and I shall write it down for you. Um, 8m plus 4n is equal to 56, and 3m plus 4n is equal to 31. Okay, um, I'll get you started. We'll call that equation 1 and we'll call that equation 2. Um, so have a go, have a go. Um, hopefully the first thing you'll spot here is that you've got 4n here and 4n here, which is a good start. But have a go, press the pause button now. Uh, take your time, and whenever you're ready, uh, if you've got your answer or if you get stuck, don't worry, just um, press play and I'll go through it with you. Okay, welcome back. Um, how do we solve these two simultaneous equations? Okay, well, when we look at it, I think I mentioned earlier, there's some good news here because we've got the same number of n's in both equations. So we could do one equation, take away the other, and that will get rid of n. Okay, so I look at the numbers and I think I'd rather do 8m take away 3m. So therefore, I'm going to do equation 1, take away equation 2. Okay, and I'm going to take my time and make it uh, nice and careful. 8m take away 3m would leave me with 5m. Okay, that's that bit done. Next, well, we kind of know this bit already, but 4n take away 4n is 0. So I can just leave it, leave that blank. And then 56 take away 31, well that leaves 25. Okay, so we've got 5m equals 25. I need 1m, so again I divide this time by 5. Divide that by 5, and we get m equals 5. Okay, so if you got that right, very good, well done. Um, remember that's really only halfway though because we've still got to work out the value of n. So you go back to one of your original equations. Um, I'm going to use this one because the numbers are smaller and we've called that equation number two. So we say in equation number two and we start to work through it. Well the first thing we see in equation number two is 3m. We now know that m is 5. So 3m is 3 times 5 which is 15. OK, what's next? Well, what's next is that bit plus 4n, OK, plus 4n, and then equals 31, equals 31. OK, so now we've got an equation uh, that we can solve to work out n. Um, remember what we do here, we've got to get the n's on their own. So the first thing to do here is take 15 away from this side and remember to do the same to the other side. OK, write down what's left. Uh, the 15 has gone, but the 4n is now on its own. And what is 31? Take away 15. Well, the answer to that is 16. Okay, how do I get from 4n to 1n? Divide by 4, 
do the same here. 16 divided by 4 is 4. So we have our final.